thematically what the game is about is fear and as uh, Batman instills fear in his enemies he can beat them. His ability to beat up the guys is affected by how scared the guys are of him before he enters the scene. Oh, okay, so all by intimidation. You know what I want. The more he's intimidated, the less Batman has to do. Uh, I like that, yeah. If you know Christian Bale's work, I and mean, what's so great about him is he's just a spectacular actor. By the same token, he's got a big presence. So, tell me about the rabbits. Can you be more threatening? Tell me about the rabbits. You want Bruce Wayne as Bruce Wayne, and you want Bruce Wayne as Batman to also have a big presence. So Christian Bale is perfect from that standpoint. And also, we had a lot of spectacular actors besides Christian. Computers never came into my generation. I, my generation, I never had a television until I was 35. We have a computer in our house, and I know what it looks like. And I know which room it's in. I'm still trying to get email on mine. My wife has to do that. Well, I'm a big gamer, so it was a huge bonus of being involved in this. It's great because they actually take a while to kill, you know? The game looks fantastic. It looks awesome. It's very stark and very strong and very steely. The colors and the textures, the sort of atmosphere of the city was definitely there, and also Arkham, where most of my stuff takes place in the movie. It looks suitably terrifying. It was remarkably like the film. It looks like you could spend a lot of time playing around with that one. Now, who is that masked man? I wanted to thank him. Unlike the rest of them, it's not a superhero. Batman's a regular person who just happened to have skills. I was nearly killed by some maniac in black pajamas. I've never done a voiceover for a game before, but it's remarkably simple because I've already rehearsed this part for two and a half months on Batman. I've played the guy for so long and you get the voice back immediately. If I may, sir, that sounds remarkably like a gas leak. A lot of the lines that we were doing today were lines from the movie, so you remember them. He's here, the bad man. The great thing is you don't have to lip sync to them. They lip sync to you, so that's, that's the good bit. I want my boat here, now. Get me the hell away from this disaster. If you're doing it in a film, you're matching it to your own lip movements. Please! Somebody! In a gaming, it's like inventing it for the first time. Rachel can nail Falcone when I deliver him. I play Rachel Doss, and I'm um, sort of the love interest of Bruce Wayne, Batman. Don't mess with me. <laughs> oh, that's what it is. I'm working the DA's office, and I follow Batman around. If there was, I would be there. I. It's more challenging sometimes to do voiceovers because you're not on the set and you have to do all the imagining by yourself and somebody's sort of telling you the situation and then, okay, say this line. Did you give my message to Detective Gordon? <coughs> it was kind of exhausting. A lot of screaming and panting. <laughs> I don't know. Can't wait to play it properly. Finish it. Will you send me a game? Absolutely. So I, I can learn how to play it. I've got to get one of the things you play it on, haven't I? Right. I'm still trying to get my email. <laughs> the role of DC in a project like this is to connect the video game team with their creative imagination, with the movie team, and with the rich history of the character. <laughs> My interaction with the game designers has been a great collaboration. Um, we've spent many hours with them coming to visit us to talk about what the film is and what the game will be. I think one of the key things that we were able to supply the game creators was access to every department head. Hello, how, how are you? Good to see you. You too. The game designers spent a long time on set with Wally Fister, our DP, and with Nathan Crowley, our production designer. They were able to see the designs, they were able to see the progress to production. Gosh, that is brilliant. It's good, isn't it? That is just brilliant, isn't it? So we couldn't well, have done that without the stuff that you gave us. Exactly oh, yeah. They build it off of those things. And it does look similar to what we've been doing. It really does. Yeah. No, it really does. Well, that's good. The game recreates the look of the film 
very, very well. When it dealt with the backgrounds and the locations, the set design, and worked with uh, Nathan Crawley. I'm responsible for the entire look of the film, from sets to choosing locations with the director, to designing the Batmobile, all the design elements. The mood of the game seems to reflect what we're doing on the, on the movie itself. The lighting of the interior environments and the sky and the look of the sets. The folks were very respectful to the color palette as well, which makes a big difference to us as filmmakers. We wanted to make sure that the two worked hand in hand and um, that, ex that experience has worked well. The game is getting closer and closer to, to what we've designed. I'm amazed at how much the technology allows the video game to capture as rich a feeling as film does. I was amazed when I first saw bits of the game and how incredible the animation is and the movement of, of the Batman character. And it seems that that's been very respectful to what Paul Jennings has done in the fights he's designed in this film. The game designers spent a long time talking to our stunt coordinator, Paul Jennings, um, in an attempt to sort of mirror the Batman's fighting style. In terms of the actual combat and the fighting moves and the finishing moves that Batman uses in the game, they're very similar to what we use in the film. The difference is that in order for Batman to cover distances in the game between characters he's fighting, we've got more gymnastic elements and more kicking movement in order for him to be able to reach his opponents quickly. When Batman's in a situation, if he can headbutt someone, that's what he'll do. No, I'm a hell of a lot worse. If he can elbow someone, that's what he'll do. He'll nail the guy. Almost every element of the game is drawn from the film, so we're really happy that the, the game um, looks as much like the film as it possibly could. You know, I think it's a really enjoyable game and I can't wait to play it from beginning to end. This is the Batman that fans have been wanting, which is what's so cool about it. Chris Nolan has just done an incredible job of, of creating that dark version of the character and making a, um, making the really the true vision of Batman that players have, and that fans have come to expect. It's really this is a return to Batman's roots, um, and that's really why it's so exciting just to be able to turn his vision of Batman into a game. In the film, Batman always is using fear as a weapon against his enemies. He scares them, when he scares them, he weakens them, and that's when he goes in for the takedown. If you could somehow find a way to integrate fear as a weapon into a video game, it would be an incredibly cool gameplay mechanic. There's a reason that no one's ever tried this before, and it's because it's incredibly complex, and the animation and art demands are huge. Holy crap, what the hell was that? If you scare someone, it's all about the reaction shot. It's all about seeing them get scared. So the animation team just did an incredible job of building out some great facial animation and real character reaction shots when guys get scared. My name's Rob Letts and I'm the executive producer on Batman Begins at Electronic Arts. Um, it's my job on the project to really coordinate all of the different teams to make sure everybody's coming together each day is completely different. One day I could be sitting in with the lead producer and the team and working on some animations. And then the next day I could be working with our partners at Warner Brothers to make sure that we're getting all of the elements from the filmmakers, movie clips, uh, voiceovers from, from the major principal talent from the movie, and any kind of special effect sequences that we see and we can kind of tie in with the game. One of the things that he does in the film is he uses this gadget called the High Frequency Transponder, which is basically a sonic device which he then attaches to an enemy which calls the bats onto that enemy. So in the game, you're able to do this as well. When the enemy gets the bats stuck on him, he completely freaks out. His level of fear goes through the roof, and then he's basically extremely weakened at that point. <laughs> When we look at gadgets for a video game, we really try and come up with gadgets that can be used system-wide and not just gadgets that are going to be one-offs. We look for stuff that we can really build out throughout the whole game. I've put a data tap on the system. Like a machine hack tool that Batman can use to hack into machinery and then use that machinery for his advantage. The security cameras could come in handy. For all their CG shots in the film, they've been actually making um, LiDAR scans of things like the Batmobile, some of their sets. Once we get those scans in from the filmmakers, then we can actually use those to more closely match the sets that were built for the film. Ultimately, it's just going to make it more rewarding for the players, and when they see certain scenes in the movie, they'll be say, oh, okay, or they see a certain scene in the game, they'll, they'll, they'll make the connection, which is really cool. I'm a kind of massive Batman fan. 
a complete Batman geek and have been for many years. And um, I'm also like a really, really big fan of racing games. Um, so for me personally, the opportunity to kind of race the Batmobile through Gotham City at high speed at 150 miles an hour is just a dream come true. As the filmmakers were, were shooting the film, the car really began to take on a life of its own, and we realized pretty early on that we had to make the Batmobile a key component of the game. Once we had the Batmobile working, and the special effects working, and the sound, and the music, and car parts were flying here and there, and cars were getting sideswiped off the road and flipping up, that's the experience that people want with the Batmobile. Like a cross between a tank and a Lamborghini, and it's just unbelievable. I came to realize that I had been put in charge, not of a fictional character, but of postmodern folklore. The character had to evolve and had to stay contemporary, yet stay true to his roots, to that, that essence that made the character popular back in 1939. I found the Batman! <laughs> the dominant emotion that I'm writing for in the, the Batman game is fear. Uh, it, it's kind of the one of the larger themes in the movie. I feel like most most video games are this combination of fear and rage. And and what we're sort of doing with Batman is is he's actually the one who's frightening all of the other characters in in the game. So I had a number of very pleasant afternoons uh, going over JT scripts with him. Talking about, talking about the characters, talking about the interpretations, talking about the mechanics of video games. The game script is, is an expansion on the film script in, in a lot of ways of, of basically trying to turn plot points that were originally carried by dialogue into action. But the major beats of the movie are the same as the major beats of the game. I've been away from video games for a decade. Uh, it's a long way from <laughs> Super Mario. Uh, it's, it's like looking at a movie. Arkham Asylum, for example. Uh, I don't think we ever quite managed to get it that right in the comic books. My favorite part of working on the game was probably directing the voice actors, because we got so much of the cast from the movie. So I mean, just working with like, like Michael Caine and Christian Bale and Katie Holmes and all of these people, they would come into the, the session and I felt like professional and fine and like we, we could like start the session. You're actually, you're the one, so this is after you taser the killer. Basically the killer turns around to fight Batman and you pull out the taser and shock him from behind. Mm -hmm. And then by like the end of it, I just, you know, just... That's awesome. <laughs> and then the last thing... Was... It's like completely became, became uh, a geek through the course of the sessions. No, no, please. Don't let him hurt me. Michael Caine has such a uh, distinctive approach to Alfred that I think is probably one of the stronger and more believable by Alfred's. Like the things that he found in the Alfred character, I was was really amazed with. He, he does think he's quite comical, so he laughs at his own little funny bits. Oh, yeah. Like there'll be no one left conscious for the past phase. <laughs> <laughs> right. What he sort of brought to the dialogue, little tweaks here and there, and talking about what his character would actually do was, was kind of amazing. Let me do it another way, huh? Yeah? Let me see if this works. This is a very funny script that was written by an American. An American's idea of where an Englishman speaks is there's a line, make haste, you know, which is very Shakespearean. But the butler would have just said, hurry up, sir. You know, that's it. <laughs> Writing for Christian Bale was, was, was good. I mean, he, he's, he's obviously a great actor. Um, and Batman's not the most eloquent guy, so a lot of it is in, in terms of like what his performance brings to what little he says. You know who I am. The Batman, please don't eat my soul. That's a new one. Knowing that there was somebody of his caliber who could actually do that, you know, lets me put a lot more trust into the performance. One of the biggest challenges we had with Batman as a game was, it wasn't enough to create a beautifully polished, fun game that follows the movie. We had to do something that players wanted to pick up the joystick and the controller over and over again. The look and the feel of the game is going to be more realistic, more gritty, 
And I think it would be most appealing of all the Batman's uh, films and games um, that have come before. My role is to facilitate the relationship between the filmmakers and the game's creators and make sure the game's creators have access to all the film assets that they need. At the beginning of the production, we, we spent a lot of time showing the game to the filmmakers. We sat down with them and we got their vision of how the film was going to be so that we could translate it into the game. And throughout production, we've shown them the game as it's been created. The biggest contribution that they, that they provide for us that, that's the most valuable is getting their take on the direction that they're going with the film. Because we want to make sure that we establish consistency and we want to make sure that Batman Begins game continues to further that experience. We couldn't have made the game the way that we have without their help because they just gave us total access to the sets, to every aspect of, of the production that we could ever imagine. The producers, Emma Thomas and uh, Chuck Rovin, fantastic in helping us. I mean, those guys were literally helping us treat this game like a mini-movie. We've just received the blueprints from the sets, the costume designs, the weapon designs, test footage of the Batmobile being driven uh, before it even had a body on it. Amazing stuff, really. This film has really distinct feel, probably different from any Batman movie that there's been before. And I think it was essential to recreate that in the game. And I think that's really happened here. We want any notions players have had of the past Batman, good or bad, we want to sort of put them to the side, start from scratch, and here you are. The new Batman is in your hands. <laughs> Batman Begins is all about how Batman became Batman. Uh, and I think uh, the audiences for both the Batman Begins game as well as the movie are going to have a different connection, more of you know a more real connection with the characters that are in the film, both good and bad. Product we wanted to really capture the essence and the personality of Batman himself. You know who I am, the Batman. Please don't eat my soul. That's something the fans demand of the film, and they demand that of the game. Batman lives in Gotham City. Gotham City is a dark city. It's a city that, although has a lot of hope, has a lot of crime in it. So the look and feel of Batman's Gotham is this crime-ridden city that needs to be cleaned up, that needs to have an Avenger. The Gotham in the film is very decaying, which is why Bruce Wayne wants to come back from his Playboy antics and save Gotham. It's really disgusting and full of trash and garbage at the bottom. And then as you work your way up higher and higher, it uh, gets more elegant and nicer because the rich people live up at the top and the poor people live at the bottom. It's kind of a metaphor. The game is pretty vertical. Uh, An Avenger. The Gotham in the film is very decaying, which is why Bruce Wayne wants to come back from his Playboy antics and save Gotham. It's really disgusting and full of trash and garbage at the bottom. And then as you work your way up higher and higher, it uh, gets more elegant and nicer because the rich people live up at the top, um, so they don't know what's going on, and then you'll jump in and fight them. Batman! He's here! But Batman is the ultimate game character because he's a superhero, but he's not omnipotent. So, you know, you've got to play him, you've got to be good. He's got gadgets, he's got a car, he's got acrobatics, he's got martial arts, but he's still human. So he rides that fine line where it's a lot of fun to play because you know at any, any given time you can run into a foe or an obstacle greater than you. Yet, if you're really good at what you do, you'll overcome it.